great American astronomer Edwin Hubble once said, We find them smaller and fainter, in constantly increasing numbers, and we know that we are reaching into space, farther and farther, until, with the faintest nebula that can be detected with the greatest telescopes, we arrive at the frontier of the known universe. The ideas expressed in the quote inspired early 20th century rocket scientists such as Hermann Oberth and Lyman Spitzer to urge the American government to finance an interstellar observatory. Unfortunately for scientists at the time, the American government, nor even any other government, had the technology to launch a man into space, much less a giant space telescope. In 1962, the United States President John F. Kennedy inspired a nation into believing that NASA could send a man to the moon by the decade's end. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountains? Why 35 years ago fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal, will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills, because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others too. In 1969, the Apollo 11 crew became American heroes and completed the first ever moon landing and proved Kennedy's assertions true. Now that everyone knew that men could be sent into space and come back safely, NASA and other companies realized a telescope orbiting the Earth was not totally out of the question. Eight years after the Apollo 11 mission, funding for the Large Space Telescope Project, also called the LST, was approved by the United States government and construction began immediately. Astronauts Lauren Shriver, Charles Bolden, Bruce McCandless, Catherine Sullivan, and Stephen Hawley were tasked with crewing the shuttle that would launch the telescope and deploy it into orbit. In 1983, the LSD project was renamed the Hubble Space Telescope Project, after Edwin Powell Hubble, a great astronomer who was the first to discover an expanding universe. The newly named Hubble Telescope was finished in 1985 and was an amazing feat for mankind in their relationship with space and the interstellar world. The Hubble mission seemed to be heading toward an early launch date until disaster struck in 1986, when the Space Shuttle Challenger launched on January 28th. T-minus 21 seconds, and the solid uh, rocket booster engine gimbal now underway. T-minus 15 seconds. One, and liftoff. Liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it has cleared the tower. So the 25th Space Shuttle mission is now on the way after more delays than NASA cares to count. This morning, it looked as though they were not going to be able to get off. The Challenger disaster created angst toward launching more people into Earth's orbit. Many were just getting over the death of seven crew members of Challenger and didn't want to send another crew to their potential deaths. Nevertheless, the Hubble Space Telescope launched four years after Challenger, on April 24, 1990. 
After its deployment into Earth's orbit, the telescope got right to work. On June 25, 1990, Hubble's first images were sent back to NASA, and the results were less than thrilling. Within the year, a new package for Hubble was approved, COSTAR, also known as the Corrective Optics Space Telescope Axial Replacement, to correct the mistake and hopefully take clear pictures. On December 2, 1993, a crew led by Commander Richard O'Covey launched from Kennedy Space Center on the Space Shuttle Endeavour with the mission to install COSTAR into the Hubble Space Telescope. Shortly after COSTAR was installed, stunning pictures were being received by NASA, images we'd never seen before of deep space. In 1995, Hubble captured remarkable images of the Pillars of Creation, an astounding mass of hydrogen gas that humans had never seen before. Later that year, the first Hubble Deep Field was observed, which allowed astronomers to study galaxies in the early universe. And most importantly of all, the Hubble telescope truly confirmed that the universe is expanding, affirming Edwin Hubble's discovery in 1920. In 1997, NASA prepared for a second servicing mission to replace the Faint Object Spectrograph, FOS, and Goddard High Resolution Spectrograph, GHRS, with the newer, more advanced Space Telescope Imaging Spectrograph, STIS, and Near Infrared Camera and Multi-Object Spectrograph, NIC-MOS, with the crew of the Space Shuttle Discovery. This helped Hubble to observe the visible afterglow of a gamma ray burst in the distant space. Shortly after, in 1999, servicing mission 3A replaced six gyroscopes of the telescope, helping the telescope point at celestial objects. And servicing mission 3B installed advanced cameras for surveys, ACS, the NICMOS cooling system, and new solar panels. Everything seemed to be going great for NASA and the Hubble program, which had led to plenty of great discoveries and images. However, when the space shuttle Columbia disintegrated during atmospheric reentry in 2003, the shuttle program was grounded again for nearly two years. Because of the Columbia disaster, another servicing mission was canceled and in 2004, the power supply of the STIS failed. Despite the failure, Hubble continued to trudge along and take beautiful pictures of the cosmos. In 2007, Hubble took a picture of the exoplanet Formal Hot B, the first image of its kind. In the same year, Hubble observed that the dwarf planet Eris is larger than Pluto. In 2009, servicing mission 4 was launched. The astronauts installed two new instruments, the Wild Field Camera 3 and the Cosmic Origin Spectrograph, COS, which made the Hubble 100 times stronger than when it was launched. Some damaged instruments were repaired, the gyroscopes and batteries were replaced, and the soft capture mechanism as well as the new outer blanket layers were installed during the mission. In 2012, images taken by Hubble revealed that seven primitive galaxies from a distant population formed over 13 billion years ago. Later that year, discovered an object back from a time when the universe was 3% of its present age, only 470 million years after the Big Bang. In 2013, Hubble discovered the true color of a planet orbiting another star, and found water vapor erupting off the surface of Jupiter's moon Europa. After the first images of an exoplanet were revealed in 2007, seven years later, Hubble proved to be paramount again, becoming the first telescope to observe an asteroid exploding. In 2015, Hubble celebrated its 25th year in orbit. Hubble also captured four pictures of an exploding star to top its list of astonishing images taken in a span of just 25 years. Now NASA and the ESO looks to the future. In 2018, the James Webb Space Telescope, being 100 times stronger than the Hubble, is planned to launch and will be capable of taking images even farther out in space. No, it's uh, actually three times as large. It has oh, okay. a six meter mirror, um, but it will observe in the, only in the infrared, whereas Hubble is making its most beautiful pictures in the optical, where also humans can more or less interpret what they're seeing. If you go to the far infrared, things are looking sometimes a bit weird, and it's probably hard to sell it as good as Hubble images. But of course, with its larger mirror and its advanced capabilities, it will allow us to see even deeper and even further into the universe and to study really the very, very first generation of stars and galaxies. James Webb Telescope will have large shoes to fill. The Hubble Telescope exceeded all expectations in delivery and longevity. It helped resolve old questions and raise new ones. Hubble was particularly effective at demonstrating the existence of black holes in nearby galaxies, as had been theorized since the 1960s. This tends to be a common theme for the telescope. From the pillars of creation to the exoplanet Formal Hot B, Hubble images have dazzled stargazers, both amateur and professional, in ways no one thought possible.